Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's time to experience the O on the original sports podcast. Fellas, 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 what's going on today? What's going on, man? Um, I just noticed that Chops did cut off his facial hair. He got like the Richard Pryor face going on oh. now. <laughs> Stay away from the spoon. Hate me because they ate me. Man, hate me because they ate me. Stay away from the spoons. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, man. That, man. Cost Richard, that cost Richard a lot of grief. Yeah. <laughs> man. Couldn't get it. To, couldn't get off that. He was on that chick. On that. Couldn't. It must. Man, but you know what? Say, on Even on real. I've <laughs> never been drugged. Never done all that. But seriously, what? My, I can't even imagine what that's like. And I say that because you know where it's going to lead. Lose everything, this, that, and the third. And cats still try it. You know what I'm saying? And they still try it. And they want to get off of it, but they can't. I'm mm-hmm. like, that. I, I couldn't imagine. Real talk, man. I joke about a lot of shit, but cats it on that, man. Oh, there's dudes back in the hometown. Dudes yeah, back man. in the hometown. Oh, of course. Yes. Can't get off hey, of it. Good show brewing here tonight. Um, we are in the midst of the NFL preseason. Everything is yeah. rolling straight forward. Uh, Shane got us a guy. Man, here it is. We welcome to the show today, former San Diego Charger, Baltimore Raven, Raven New England Pat. Patriot, and Kansas Chief. City Chief. Uh, Rob Butler, defensive back. Uh, Butler played his college football at the University of Pittsburgh and some – Bobby Moe, so I'm RMU Robert Morris before his stint in the league as a safety. Uh, after playing on both sides of the ball as a young buck, Rob showed his flexibility by flipping over to the defensive side to stay. Um, we can't forget to mention his thoughts on the state of the current game, from cash to rules to the level of play Rob is, is seeing. Um, he's got some opinions. We know he does, so... Let's go ahead and get Rob in here with us today. There he is. Yeah, <laughs> what's going on? What's good, fellas? I hey the barber. What 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 an amazing introduction. My God. I was like, who is he talking about? Now look, I had to size you up a little bit. <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. RDB, yes, what's up, man? What's going on? What's going on out there in Cali? Hey, man, listen, the sun is still shining out here. The birds are still chirping out here in California. Okay. I gotta represent. Okay. Uninterrupted. You got to represent Braun and, and, and the gang. Hey, hey, you hey! Know. We don't have any of those. I got, I got to get, the, I got to get the plug on those. I got to get the I plug. Got I got you. <laughs> send me, send me your sizes. I know a guy. I know a guy. We <laughs> <laughs> could all support him. Oh yes, no we doubt. will. Yes, no we doubt. will. We would all support him for you. Hey, no we're gonna doubt. jump. We're gonna jump straight mm-hmm. into this, Rob. Man, give us a little rundown on you know where you grew up in Pittsburgh. For sure. So, man, I bounced around. Um, born originally in Garfield. So those of you familiar with Pittsburgh know the Garfield Heights projects where, where it all started. As I say, my, my mom had me, um, actually she was pregnant with me during her senior year. Both of my parents went to older dice school of Curtis Martin. Um, hall of fame, hall of fame, Curtis Martin. Yeah, so so everybody know what time it is, what type of time we on in Pittsburgh, okay? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Don't worry. Okay. Um, started in Garfield, moved to um, Broadhead Manor after that, so west side. So from east side to west side, stayed in Broadhead. Then I moved to Swissville to live with my dad for a year. I was this close to being a Wolverine. Like, I I, I could have been a Wolverine. Commodore. Yeah. So those, I, I kind of met those guys in fourth grade, moved back to the north side. Um, oh, actually moved to north side for the first time. Uh, fifth grade, and I was pretty much north side till Pitt, right? So Spring Hill, Spring Garden, Spring Hill, Hood Town, Mexican War Street area, Jacksonia, um, and then Uptown. So when I went to Pitt, my mom moved to Uptown on Forbes so she could be closer to me. If you if you know Pittsburgh, you could get to Pitt in like 10 minutes from the north side. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, really- yeah. <laughs> she's like that's in traffic in traffic it's like yeah. oh, you didn't have to do that but these are all hey look these are all pittsburgh these are both pittsburgh guys okay yeah. good you yes know, yeah. yes yes the whole, the whole squad is pittsburgh people so yes 
Perfect. We got the crew is missing a few. Copy. <laughs> Copy. He'd be Copy. drunk. He'd be he'd be off the chain. <laughs> right? It's it's what well, it's it's he Monday would. night at nine. You know he'd be off the chain yeah, right he, now. He, he, he sheets to the win, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. He's always oh, yeah. A he's a teacher just like me. We drink all summer. <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You got a good group. Yes. We try. Yeah, we yes, try. Yes. We've been at this for a while now. Yes. You know, it's always interesting to talk to people and and just get it out there. Um, you can hear us and see us everywhere. Yeah. You know, which makes it a lot of fun. Uh, right. I love hearing people's stories. It's like read a mini biography every time we talk to somebody new. Some of the we had this dude on. What was his name? Spinny Spinny Johnson. <laughs> Not Spinny. Played, with the played with the Globe Trotters. Uh -huh. yes. that interesting as hell. Yes. Um, right. We got a guest coming on next week, uh, Vicky Bullet. Right. So she played. She played at Maryland, played in the WNBA. Wow. She, yeah. Uh, two time Olympics. You know, like we get some pretty cool people. Yeah, have y'all had Ashley Battle on yet? No. Got to get AB on here. Actually, I Ashley. Hey, I forgot about that. Come on, come on Manchester, Northside. I forget. WNBA, yes. Yes. Three -time yes. National champion at UConn. Yes. I mean, I'm, you're right. Let me write that down. You're right. She, See, I told you. I told y'all the butler would be on it. I told y'all. Hey. She's probably the most decorated athlete, one of the top decor most decorated athletes in Western Pennsylvania in the last 50 years. I would say Ashley Battle is a top five. She's she's with the Celtics now, right? Yes. Front office. Yeah. Correct. Oh, Correct. Yeah. Come on. My mistake, guys. It's my mistake. <laughs> if you get if you get Ashley, you might get Swin. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm doing? Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, we we were gonna touch on that too. Don't worry, we're gonna touch on that. Yeah. Go ahead, hit him. <laughs> Swin Cash was legit too. Hey, let, let, let's talk about where it all started. T -t talk a little bit about where this this football career started. What pee wee league was you in? Wow, <laughs> woo man! So you taking me back to I'm I'm seven years old, living in Broadhead, right? Broadhead Manor projects. You had two teams that you could play for. One you may have remember the Sheridan Bulldogs. Yeah. Sheridan Bulldogs, and the second was the Kraft and Cougars that became the Carlington Cougars. Okay. Yes, and so I played. Well, let me how could I say this? Be PC a little bit. Let's say the Bulldogs, those were the guys that that was real rough, like, like, like from the hood, know, hood, like hood, hood guys. <laughs> like, we, we all in the same hood, but those guys either gonna be on the NFL or they're gonna, you know, it, it's you know, those guys had some anger um to deal with and in football was therapy i just naturally the one of my best friends his name was kenny townsend the little brother of otis townsend if you if you, you know you know otis sheen yes, um yes, Perry, yes. Perry commodore so so kenny was a year or two older than me and he was like man you fast you should play football and i was like i didn't know i was fast and i, I was just running around and so i signed up my first year i'm wearing 63. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just know that that's a lineman. There was I didn't get a chance to carry the football. I had the forearm shivers. My dad went to uh, read sports. Y'all remember read sports? No. What, in, in Green, Green Tree, read sports was a little, like okay. So everybody from the West Side would go to read sports like before Dicks to right. get your right, stuff. Right. right. Every, you played for Sheridan. You played for Carlington. You was going to Reeds to get your stuff. All right. So. I played, I, I was like a backup left tackle or something like that, right tackle. It was ugly. It was ugly. You know, I had the Greg Lloyd face mask, the whole nine. It was bad. <laughs> but I learned how to be in the trenches, though. I didn't know then what it would set me up or prepare me to become in terms of the physicality that 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 was my game. Yeah. And and we'll get to that. I, I see the question, so we'll get to that. But that, that, that being in the trenches, being willing to butt heads and get your nose bloody, um, that was my foundation. And the next year, guys, I when Kenny and all them graduate, Kenny, Boo Boo, all these guys from the hood, they graduated because they were they were nine and I was seven. It was wide open. The speed, nothing like I was always fast, but I just didn't have any experience. Once the guys who carried the rock, because we ran a wishbone, once they graduated, it was my time to shine. So I in nine games, I had 40, 42 touchdowns in nine games. Um at that time, I was eight. But you years only old. played at one other team then. What's that? You only played Carlington. 
That, well, I played. Yeah, I, I played at Carlington. Okay. I played for Carlington. Okay. And, and so and so we played Cannonsburg, Brookline, Stow Rocks. Um, Brentwood, oh. Upper St. Clair. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Fort Cherry. Oh, um, shit. South Lafayette. South Fayette. South Fayette. South Fayette. Oh, not yeah. Lafayette. Yes. South yeah. Fayette. We played all those guys, man. We we played um, Montour, Bethel Park, man. Baldwin. That's it's a big schedule. All- yeah, and it yeah. it changed. This is this is kind of throughout the years. This is, these are the teams and that that we faced. So forty touchdowns. I said to my dad. Hey man, I think I want to. I want to. Hey dad, I don't want to be when I grow up. He's like, what? I said I want to be an NFL player. He's like, boy, this is the middle of the game. This is like after a touchdown. I had an epiphany. I want to play in the NFL. He was like, boy, get your ass back in there and go hit somebody. Okay, that's about he kind, right. He was kind of dismissive, but you know, I, it was it was mid game, so I get it. I get it. I went back in there and I hit somebody. So that's that's kind of how it all got started, man. I fell in love with the game. I saw a path to transcend the projects. I found the path to earn a scholarship so that I can get college education with um, without having to pay for it. And then obviously you had to play ball to get to the league. So it just made sense. Let me ask you a question. Did you have a phone on the sideline when you hit your dad up or did you just show up into the stands? Great question. You peep that. He's perceptive. He's perceptive. So my dad, my dad was a coach. He coached. Oh me. shit. So, so when, when I, my first year, he didn't coach me. Cause I, I, you know, I was a nobody, you know, backup left tackle, whatever. The second year I came in and they were like, Oh, Robbie, Robbie, like Robbie's going to be our guy. We're going to, we're going to put the team on his, we're going to put the, we're going to put the whole team on his back and he's going to take us to the championship. Makes sense. Um, and so my dad came out and was my coach. He coached me from pretty much eight to, to I got the period. Oh, hmm. yeah. Didn't didn't know diddly about X's and O's. <laughs> Just pure know, athleticism. Pure. He gave me mindset. He gave me mentality. My dad. My dad was a like a dog. He never played because uh, he was working to you know get ready for me for my coming in high school. He ran a little bit of track, but he was to your point, chops. My dad was a ridiculous athlete. If you see my dad right now, the jeans at sixty one, he got a six pack right now at sixty one. Like it. Damn. He, he, he looks for he looks he looks like he's my brother. I look old next to my dad, which is kind of messed up. It's kind of messed that's up. A fact. That's a fact. I he, got you. I got you. Yeah, he's just a freak. He's he's you know he was always fast, always strong. He was like an action figure to me growing up. Um, so having him on the sideline, like there was no you couldn't be a b word. You understand? Like your dad, you. your dad is watching. And he he expects you to go 150 percent, and he expects you to dominate. He don't care. He doesn't care if that guy was the, the man at the league last two three years. He don't care if the kid is older than me. He don't care if that dude's a savage in his hood. He's just like, you better run to compete. Up. You got to run up. You got to you got to take his. You got to run up in his face. I, I mean, you already you. told me you wanted to go to the league, so you set yourself up right there. <laughs> right? It's true. It's <laughs> true. You was eight years old telling your dad that shit, and he's like, "All right, let's strap it up. Now get Wait, in there and hit somebody." That's crazy, bro. You, you wasn't was... standing there with your hands on your hips like this. She, <laughs> she, she gets all them kids for doing that. Nah, there was no. I couldn't put my hands on my hips. There was no hands on your hips. There was no bending over. Like you couldn't. I come from that, man. I'm my, I was fortunate to have a, a my dad in my life as well as the coaches that I had, but having my actual biological dad, even though he was non-custodial on the sideline for, you know, seven years. Yeah. Man. That's big in our community, man. That's, it's, 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 it's huge. It, it, it's yes. huge. Yes, it so is. Look, bro, bro, let me ask you this real quick, man. Like, so you're in this thing. Now my dad is from, my dad lived on Susquehanna street in Homewood. So that's exactly. where my pops is from. Right. <laughs> so now having said that, you do it all your what big 33, fabulous 22. Now you might have played with my cousin. Um, we would I went to Kiski Hutcherson, yep. so that was so that so that's you come up now, but you're also a letterman in track, right? Mm-hmm. You're also a letterman. You told your dad at a young age you was going to the NFL, but as you get older, was football still your first love? Was that always your main first love? And what high school did you go to? Oh, yeah, oh, well, I'm Commodores all, all day, baby, you know. You know, PTA all day. Uh, <laughs> I, I always, 
always from the from the time I chose a sport, uh, it was always football. Uh, track was always a means to make me more valuable yeah. as a football player because speed kills. And and it wasn't for, I didn't run track to get faster. I run track to learn how to run. I ran track to learn how to run. I I it was somebody said to me. I think it was um shoot my ninth grade my eighth grade year. My eighth grade year, my last year playing for actually, I played for Carlington. My freshman year at Perry, I didn't play. I didn't play high school ball my freshman year. I was a young freshman. I graduated at seventeen. Um, I, I was. I, I didn't want to go. To, I, I wanted to finish out my little youth situation. And so, um, somebody said to me, "Man, you fast, but you work too hard. You're working too hard." <laughs> I was like, you know, what does that even? What does that even mean? Like, he's like, you smashing grapes. I played running back. Uh, and he, he said, "You smashing grapes. You making yeah. wine." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, you running it. You, you, you're a whole lot of movement, and and your feet are turning over, but you're not covering enough ground." So he's like, "You know, when you get to high school, you should run track." So that's why I got into track. But track was all. I never thought I could be. I would play against guys who had 10 2, 10 3, 100 meter speed, and they couldn't cover me. They could, they could, they couldn't guard me on the uh, on the football field, that's and they couldn't run. They could, it's a it's a different animal. So so you're you're lettered in track, you're a track yeah. letterman, whatever have you. Now, did you hey, how do I say this? You're you're honing your skills getting better in football. Mm -hmm. Did track come naturally to you in running? And yeah. were you putting as much time in the track as you were for the football field, or did track just this is what I do, man? We just run. Ninth grade was natural. Um then I met a guy named Mark Hogan, who's also a Pittsburgh legend. Mark Hogan um, was my then girlfriend's dad, and 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 she was a track phenom, right? And and so I started training with him, mm. and then he started recording me and breaking down my mechanics from my right. dorsiflexion to my knee lift to how my hands was. I was like, yo, this is. This is this is insane. But I listened to everything that he said and I and and I begin through him, I begin to smooth out my running mechanics so I, I can run you. fast while not working so hard. And now I can I can maintain that speed. So if you if you if you turn on the tape my junior year and senior year, you're gonna be like, okay, first quarter, he's flying around. Fourth quarter, he's flying around like it's the first quarter. It's because I was able to learn how to conserve my energy and still I got hit you. Those. Maximum speed. I got you. I got yep. you. Yep. Hey, so uh, you went to Perry, uh, guys. I, of course, I know you guys had a, uh, some some great years there. Um, and of course, you went to Perry. I mean, I, I don't even want to jump into say ask you why you chose Pitt without talking about your high school career. I, did you? Of course, you played in the Big Thirty Three, so you must have scored a lot of touchdowns, had a lot of yards, shut yeah. down a lot of people, won a lot of games. Yeah. Did it yeah. look you had you had back then before twenty four seven sports before huddle. Um, was rival out? No, there was no route. There was no route, but there was there was Don Lemons, <laughs> Don Lemons, uh, Dan Hansen's Dan Hansen. Yeah, the the blue chipper thing and, and oh wow, all state. There was USA Today All American. I was a, I was a USA Today All American honorable mention as a as a corner, but um, I think I think that. It was it was uh, Metro Index football camp with Joe Butler that Joe really oh, yes I that. Back Met with that one. <laughs> Metro Index football camp Joe Butler so we go to um, we go there and I ran a four four I popped a four four my my sophomore year going into my hand time year. or they had the laser then it was a it was a hand time back then it was a hand time but it was still the, it was still the fastest time at the camp at, at you know what I mean and um, who else was there who might who else might have been there that year uh I mean Rob was there uh there was a, there was a couple dudes from the Whippeo who who were a little older like 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 the Madi Williams the West the, uh, Woodland Hills the Woodland Hills Syracuse. boys was, they were older they were they were a little older um when I first started going there but but I, I always felt like I was a big dog like I I didn't go into it feeling like I, I didn't have the chip on my shoulder like my son does. Um, I was way I was way more humble. I didn't even know that I was that I was as good as I was. And um, had I known, I may have worked harder. I think it was Chops who asked the question: Did you work as hard in track as you did in football? And at first, the answer was no. And then I got with, with Mark Hogan. Um, then I start working at it. 
but even then I never felt like I could be like Eddie Drummond. Like I, we would, I would practice with dudes like Eddie Drummond and be like, I can't do that. Right. <laughs> that, that dude is really fast. Like right. he, fast Eddie Drummond. what? He's not just yeah. football fast. He's track fast. He ain't just yeah. track fast. He's football fast. I've seen a lot of dudes who were track fast, but it, they didn't have that quickness on the field. Eddie was not one of them. <laughs> he could, he could trans, he could transfer over. Um, Another name you just gave me. Thank you. Yeah, damn, man. We're going we gonna to have about 10 of them by the time we wrap this thing. Hopefully. 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 So, yeah, yeah I, scored, I scored a lot of touchdowns, um, had a lot of interceptions. Um, one of the questions was, you know, what position did you did you prefer? And that really – I had about 50 D1 offers. That's That was going to be my – yeah. Yeah, split but, down the middle, 25-ish, 25-ish for corner and receiver. Did you know you wanted Pitt off the rip or – no nah. nah, man. What was you thinking? What were you How thinking? How did they get you there? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Um I'll say this. I had so my 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 five final, you know, official visits were Pitt. I, I chose Pitt because again, man, coming from a humble background, I wanted my mom and dad to experience a, an official visit because they didn't go to any of the other um four. Right, right, just, right, right. Back then, I don't think they they paid for two people to come with you or no. something. It, yeah, it was just me. Just I remember they meet you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I went by myself. Right. Pitt was my last trip, and I did that just for my parents because I wanted them to eat lo lobster and steak. I wanted I wanted them to feel, you know, be a part of this recruiting process yeah. with me because they they weren't really a part of it. Um, Wait, you, you guys went to the Gold Room. We went to uh, Woodson's. Okay. Know, it took y'all out. Okay. Okay. Yes, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's it? Uh, Station Square. Station was it? Square. Yep. Yeah. 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 Back and it became day. a club. Yep. 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 Um. So I, I went. So Pitt was last, but I went to Michigan State. Rod and I did that trip together. Rod Rutherford. Mm -hmm. I went to Wisconsin. Michigan State. They wanted me for corner. Mm -hmm. I'll get to the stories after the after I give you the rundown. Uh, head coach was Nick Saban. Oh, oh wow. shit. D coordinator was Dan Tony. It was who? Who was it? Uh, the coordinator was uh, D'Antonio, uh, Mark. Yeah. Mark D'Antonio. Yeah. Yep. And then Narduzzi came in as his D coordinator, right? After that. Yeah. I, yep. I, so so that was that was Michigan State, right? Uh, Wisconsin was Barry Alvarez, and I was recruited by um, Jay Hayes, man. Jonathan Hayes' brother. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Steelers. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, I, guess, I think they're from western Pennsylvania or something, yeah, right? from Fayette County. Yes. There we yeah. go. Man. <laughs> It's crazy. So he recruited me. He was the D-line coach at Wisconsin at the time, but he recruited Western Pennsylvania. Back then, they recruited areas. It wasn't like the, the receiver coach recruited all the receivers. Right. It was, they right. had areas, geographies. Um, and then NC State and Maryland. So those were those were the five. I probably – Pitt, Pitt rose to the top. Maryland rose to the top because those were, the of the five, the schools that told me that I could play as a true freshman. And it's all for DB. It's all for – they're all looking at you for DB. Good question. So Pitt gave me the option. Literally was like, you're an athlete. You could play either or. You pick. You you could do – and and then Maryland was like, we actually want you to play both both ways plus some running back. Was that Ralph? That was – um, that was Vanderland. Vanderland. Oh. Vandersloot or whatever the hell was last year. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Vanderlyn and, and, and yeah, Dan Rocco. Vanderlyn. Dan Rocco was the recruit recruiter that who recruited me. The Rocco's they from Western Pennsylvania as well. Um yes. he yeah. went to Virginia after Frank that. Frank Rocco. Frank Rocco, yeah, his yep. brother. Yep. Um, so that was the final five. I chose Pitt because one, I had no concept at 17 that red shirting could be such a great, a great idea. Yeah. And and nobody in my family did had what this you were doing right so i did have a mentor in chuck sanders chuck sanders was my was a, was a mint was start mentoring me like i was 13 years old chucky sanders yeah i met chuck through church it was a church thing in macedonia baptist like he's church my age. yeah he's yeah. an old buck like me like 50, 50, maybe 50. he's chop's age 56 57 <laughs> i'm 58 chuck. 50 yeah, yeah chuck's probably closer to 58 you're right, right yeah. there. you're right so so he his whole thing was just we really we really wasn't we didn't have a methodical approach to recruiting guys it was just like i wanted to play as a freshman and when mark when when nick saban came to my house with golden rule pat rule 
Pat Golden Rule came to my crib, sat on sat down at my, my kitchen table, all business. He had on his suit jacket, and, and Golden Rule is an extroverted guy, cracks a lot of jokes. N Coach Saban? <laughs> I hate it. He was straight face saving. I'm like, dang, like lighten up. He had this aura of an executive, like a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Then this is 1998 when he's sitting in my living room. Wow. He sits down, and uh, I asked him what their plan is for me. He's like, well, we like you, we like you at both, but we really like you at uh at, at cornerback. Cool. He said, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, we're going to redshirt you. Give you some chance, give you some time to get bigger, stronger, faster, blah, 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 learn the system, yada, yada, yada. Yo, I stopped listening after he said he was going to redshirt me. Like, I, because it, it, I was so, yeah. ignorant. I'm like, yo, what are you talking about? Like, I, I go up against grown men. Like, I, I can, I can play, not knowing there was two returning seniors. Let those dudes start, take that red shirt, get bigger, stronger, and faster. And he told me, he said, if you, you red shirt, you do everything I tell you to do, you'll be a four year starter in a first round draft pick. I guess I didn't believe him. I just I didn't believe anything he said after after he was going <laughs> after he said she's because she was probably looking down at him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and so he left. To, well, he didn't stay the whole four years, Barbara. He he ended up going to LSU um, in 2000, I believe it was 2001, something like that. Yep. For a minute, yeah, he was only there for a minute. He dipped out. He dipped out. So you know that's that. Then he yeah. went to Miami. Yeah. Yep. And then Alabama. Alabama. Wow. But but so Pitt was Pitt was play early and my family could see me play without breaking the bank, man. Again, I that was big. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, They've I been there it. since day one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You miss Pitt Stadium? What? So you had to play a Pitt Stadium. Ah, early. listen, go go ahead and tell them who made go ahead, tell them the last play. It's go good. ahead. It's good. So so I'm I'm probably one of four Pitt players to play at old Pitt Stadium. Three Rivers Stadium and Heinz Field. How one of that? like, but I'm actually the last player to touch the ball during regulation in the last game at Pitt Stadium versus um, Notre Dame ESPN Thursday night. Um, it was a pass breakup in the back of the end zone. It should I should have picked it. I should have picked it. I should have picked it and just ran it back 106 yards just to be a legend. But I was on some bull. I was on some bull and broke it up. And I thought my coaches would have yelled at me if I'd have tried to pick it and not break it up. Da, 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 da. I had all this. Yeah. And we we were winning anyway, so it really didn't matter. But it it was they stormed. It would have been field. nice to say now. It would have been nice. Yeah. It would have been nice yeah. to say like, man, I ended it on a bang, right? Yeah. yeah. I think I was at that game. Yeah, Thursday night against I think Notre I was Dame. At that game. I probably remember. Yeah. No. RDB, I probably only remember the first half though. If I was there. <laughs> drinks were. <laughs> Fluid was you had to hydrate. You had to hydrate, and then I whatever did. happened. Yeah, I mean, I did. Stuff you happened. couldn't hydrate in the stadium though. You had to do it before the stadium. Oh, really? I didn't see. I didn't know that perspective. Yeah. You and couldn't. You had to hike up that big ass hill. Zelda. Oh, oh. What? yeah. Zelda's was the bang. Zelda. Oh, yeah. Right next and to that. You got it. Got it. Ooh. Man, y'all going way back. Jesus, <laughs> man. <laughs> man. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Zelda. <laughs> Zelda, oh, man. Oh my God. I love Jeez. those things. Yeah, 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 man. But now, real quick, as you talked about, like you said, you wanted to break it up because you figured the coaches would yell. So as we talk about coaches, you played for Walt Harris and as well Joe Walton. Yeah. What – a couple point, couple que questions in this one. Yeah. What was the difference in the coaches, if there was a difference? Mm. Did either one give you different tips on how to get you to the next level? Did coaches okay. even focus on that, or were they like, we want you – you're here now – Help us win. Whatever happens after that is it right. is what it is. Yeah, those are those are my two college head headmen, headmen. Um, underneath them, uh, I had some great coordinators. But to answer your question, chops is Walt. Love Walt. Walt, I love you. If you see this, I love you, man. It's coming from love, but it's true. He 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 focused on the wrong things. He focused on things like sideburns above your earlobe. <laughs> Because uh, he was older too, though. Yeah, he, he focused on like no earrings. Right. He, he he focused on how you looked. Like he would say little things about your hair, and 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 it was almost kind of like, yo, you know, you really can't, you know, you you right, probably right. shouldn't be saying that out loud. <laughs> um, yeah. especially nowadays. Yes. Uh, 
he oh you couldn't even mention it nowadays you can't even think it nowadays <laughs> right you like your, mind. your shit's getting canceled. pinpointed yeah that's, that's it you're that's done it. They, they taking your statue down so he, he but he was big on discipline he was big on integrity he was big on we over me so i did i gleaned something from walt that was valuable um he caught me when i was at my youngest the most immature uh so so he helped me to look in the mirror because he was Okay. He would do stuff that didn't make any sense to me. And and now I didn't look in the mirror until I transferred. I was too pissed off there to look in the mirror because I thought I was right. When I transferred, I had time to reflect and I realized what he was trying to do and, and where he was trying to guide me and push me. I looked back and I actually tried to circle back and go back to Pitt. Most people don't know this. This is, this is like an exclusive. I transferred to Robert Morris, got them to release me. Crystal Sala gave me my release, transferred to Robert Morris. I have a week to reflect. 9-11 happened, so that buys me a little bit because the world shut down. Yeah. That kind of bought me um, a couple more days because there was supposed to be a cutoff. I got it like an extra week to make my decision. I tried to go back. By the time I tried to call, I called Coach LaSala. I was like, man, I made a big, big mistake. I want to come back, Coach. I hope my scholarship's still available. He said, Robbie, I wish you wouldn't have left. We gave your scholarship to Brandon Myrie. Brandon Myrie... Transfer from Bama. from Bama was supposed to come into Pitt with me. So Marie was on my on my on my visit. Gerald Hayes was on my Pitt visit. Jabbar yeah. Gaffney was on my my Pitt oh, visit. Shit. Rod Rutherford. The, we were all talking about how we we're going to turn. We, we we're going to be the class that turns Pitt around. And that class ended up being the class that turned Pitt around. I just didn't get to see it through. Mm. That class. That class had eleven guys make an NFL make an NFL club. Like, that's insane. That, that, that's insane, right? No yeah. Larry Fitzgeralds or Tony Dorsett's or Dan Marino's, but Lusaka Polite, Gerald Hayes, myself, Rod, uh, um, um, uh, Matt Morgan, on and on and on and on and on. A lot of guys got pro shots and didn't, you know, didn't actually uh, play in an active game, but 11 people got pro shots and went to camp. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah, it is. Or to Joe Walton. When I got to, to Robert Morris, I now know – a, a lot more about the game. Joe Walton is intentional. He coached at, at the Jets in the eighties. So he, he has a pro mindset. He taught, he taught me you're going to, it's not about talent. It's not about talent. Um, he thought I can play in the league at, at both, both positions, but I played receiver. I tra I moved to receiver at Pitt before I transferred set foot on the field. First game at Heinz field. I was on the field. I actually quit during the game. If we have time, I'll circle back to that. I quit in the middle of a game. That's a and, wild and, story. Antonio Brown style? You yeah. Did you like take off your shirt? <laughs> I didn't do that. Like <laughs> it was it was it was quiet, but it was it was damn it was similar. It was very okay. similar. I, I was, was better. I was I mean, what was the, what was the Bills DB who quit? There was a Bills DB who quit during a game at halftime. He retired. He retired. Yes, he retired. Yeah, he retired at halftime a couple <laughs> seasons ago. Man, yeah. you you would tell that story now. We got time for that. Jim. You got time? Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Okay. Believe that. Spill the beads, bro. We're playing South Florida or Central Florida at the crib. First game at Hines Stadium. And uh, I was – when we went four wides, I would be the, the fourth receiver. I would be – I would come in as the Y. Unless they went big, then a tight end would come in as the Y. Um, so when we went regular base personnel, I was behind Antonio Bryant. They put me yeah. behind. I was the second Z. Um, so Antonio gets hurt. Mm. I'm like, I'm the second Z on the damn on the depth chart. So it's go time, baby. <laughs> I throw my helmet on. Well, Harris is like, give me, give me. And I'm, I look him in the eye like, you mean me? I'm right here. Like, give me, give me, me. Like, give me wrong. Yeah. Like, he's like, give me Yogi. Yogi. Oh, Yogi Roth. Yogi Roth. I foot three Yogi. Hey, my that's my brother to this day. I know, I know, bro's a, I know. Bro, bro is a walk on, like he's literally a walk on, but he is the coach in the locker room. Yogi knew every play and every scheme, every check. He was a student of the game, an intellectual. And you watch him do his Big 12 talks, and, and, and now he's doing his, his sports. Follow Yogi Roth on Instagram. Yes, get him on the show. He he you he always was that guy. He always was a guy. So Yogi goes in, true story. The crazy part about this story, guys, 
is what I'm about to tell you. I did not know until me and Yogi connected out here. We were, he was telling this story to my son, Aaron, who's now at Texas, but I heard it for the first time. Here's the story. Antonio sprains his ankle. He's out for weeks. Mm. Well, Will Harris is looking for the next man up. It's Yogi, not me. Mind <laughs> you, I had, <laughs> mind you, I had missed camp. I missed camp due to injury. I'll, I'll get into that later. I, I had a de debilitating injury or a condition where I, I wasn't even supposed to be playing football, but here I am. Yogi catches a pass. Cross, it was a dig or something. He gets blasted by the safety in the corner. He gets back up. He's he's down, and I'm like, oh, Yogi's hurt. <laughs> Antonio is clearly done. Like he didn't. He popped. He's his helmet's off. Hey, shoulder pads. He's done. I'm like. Now Walter's like, get me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Robbie, get in the game. I was like, oh, ho, ho. listen, my teammates know what it is. Because I tear their ass up at practice. They, 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 know, know. they know if I get the ball, the whole world's going to know who I am. So I get in. He gets sacked. I think John, it was John Terman or David Priestley, one of those two quarterbacks. He gets sacked, first play, second play, they call a run. I'm like, yo, give me a bubble, give me a hitch, give me a slant, give me a comeback, give me an out, give me anything where I can catch the ball in space, make somebody miss, and it's, it's curtains. Guess who's feeling better, guys? Brian. Yogi. Yogi. Yogi, <laughs> Yogi bro. Oh. Bro. He knew the playbook. He knew the hey he 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 had the trust. So if you watching right. this and you a dad or you you a coach or you a you a kid or you a player, don't nobody give a damn how fast you are for real for real how big you are until until or how talented you are until they Yogi can trust goes down. It, it, you have to you have to be you have to be a real student of the game. You have to be a real mm. football intellectual. Wow. Um, you have to have the mental part. And not, that's just X's, X's and O's mental, but you also have to be emotionally intelligent to be able to manage your, your emotions, um, your outbursts, and be able to handle competition and constructive feedback that, you know, where, where I'm from, the way the coaches talked to me at Pitt was the first time I ever got cussed out by oh, a grown man who wasn't my dad. Oh, wow. So I, I wanted to fight. Yeah, without question. When, when Larry Courier... Coach Courier, the legendary yeah. Coach Courier, Super Bowl winning D coordinator, Coach Courier cussed yeah. me out. I was like, yo, like, I don't know. <laughs> y'all just let him. Oh, yeah. Y'all just going to let the little white dude talk to y'all like that? Y'all go, oh, he got me. Hey, he got me effed up. He got yeah, me without up. question. Got me effed up. Then I realized, like, nah, dude, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, <laughs> you're going to have to chill out. You got to relax. And so that's another part of the game that doesn't really get talked about. So listen, Yogi's telling a story to my son. Unbeknownst to me, when Yogi got hit by the safety on that dig, later on he 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 found out he broke his neck. Ooh. He broke his neck. He literally broke his the neck. Vertebrae. He, he came back. He told he told me and my son this to my face. He said, "All I can think about if if Rob gets the ball, I'm never going to get on the field. I'm never going to earn a scholarship." If if because because he knows, he would always say, "I wish I had your talent." I would say, "I wish I had your your smarts or your brain." When I didn't realize that it was a product of him investing the time in the right. playbook when right. I was talking to girls, right. wilding out, yeah, right, yeah, going to the O. I mean, you talk about that. Look, I coached high school football, and I had this kid. I'm not even going to get into names; it's not important. But his dad played in the league. He played for the Jets and Seattle, I believe it was. Yeah. And the kid was a track star, yeah. but he couldn't play football. He didn't understand football. He yeah. just didn't understand football. Great kid, would do whatever you ask him. But we had him in the backfield because he could run like hell. We had a fullback in front of him. All he had to do is grab the ball and follow the fullback, right? So <laughs> dad gets in my shit. He's all over me. He's all over me on Friday nights. He's all over me all the time, texting me. So finally I said, Saturday morning, I'll see you in the – in the coach's office, I want you to come in there and I want you to show me on the board what you think I should do with your son. He came <laughs> in. I handed him a marker. Draw it up. <laughs> he didn't know shit. Yeah. And I start, you know, and I'm an offensive guy. Like, I'm an offensive guy. And I'm 
I'm dissecting. He's drawing these plays up. I'm like, okay, what happens if I get in this defense? Uh, you can't run it. All right. Oh, give me something else. What happens if I get in this defense? Yeah. Well, you can't run that. And I said, what do you try, What do you want me to do? Right. What do you want me to do? You don't know the game. Somebody yeah. handed you the ball in the league and said, run like hell, and you was able to do that. But you yep. didn't know what the hell you was doing, did you? Because yeah. you don't know it right here. Yeah. And that was it. That was mm. it. Never talked to the dad again. Yeah. And it was all right. It was all right. So Yogi carved a niche for himself after that because I remember Yogi, he – Got some good time. I think he earned he earned a scholarship. Um, had his internship at Fox Sports Network because he knew he always wanted to go into uh, be an analyst, be a broadcaster. Dude co wrote a book with Pete Carroll, man, on the staff at when he was at, he was on the staff at USC yes, when they won the national championship. Mm-hmm. Like, he, like <laughs> but, it, but, it, but it's weird. I don't. I hate to use the word, weird, but it's crazy to me how the DBs, as you say, were cooking every day in practice. They knew what you could do. Yeah. Yogi told your son flat out, I knew if I didn't get back on the field, I'd never see the ball again if Rob got it. But the coaches weren't creative enough with the vision. Yeah. He's our playmaker. Get him the ball. Get him the ball. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a great it, point, Chops. It, it's it, weird. It's um. It's not. Well, what, to me it is because if it's, it, it's, it's weird to me because you, like you said, he may not understand how – to block or what to run certain routes. But mm-hmm. if I'm the coach, I realize this is one of my best players. This is one of my best athletes. Mm-hmm. I am supposed to scheme. And if right. I can scheme a way to get you the ball right. in the open field, I don't need you to make all 10, 11 guys miss. Just right. one. You know what I mean? Because with your speak, that's where I'm like, because we see it nowadays where guys, the coaches will draw up plays for certain players to get his athleticism working. And well, that, that's, that's funny you say that, Chops, because the uh, when Pitt, Play Penn State. They did that for Rod Rutherford, didn't they? <laughs> they sure did. That's how he caught. That's how. He, that's how he had the touchdown on the sideline. That was the only touchdown of the day, right? That was a Rod. That was a that was a tag. Like they made the play yeah. for him. But 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 the, you're both right. I know the barber is dying. At, he's dying it because the coach and him is like, listen, and, and 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 so I know where he's going. So let me say let me say this for color, and then I'm gonna tee him up because I know where he's going. Um, I, I want I want you to imagine chops that when I say. I wasn't a genius in the playbook. I'm talking about I was probably 90%. I, I'm not saying I couldn't be trusted. Like I didn't I know. Got you. Like you, you can't put the guy out there because he's gonna run the wrong route every time. No, nine out of ten times I'm gonna run the right route, the play that was called. I'm gonna miss it once. The, the, the difference is at that level, the other guys are 10 for 10. Right. I got you. It, I think of it this way. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. What do you the, think? The margin, the margin for error, the margin for not is so much more slim than, and they don't think they don't think. Let me tag this guy because he can boogie. They they their first thought was, uh, I like we we could trust this guy more than we can trust Robbie. And I had just gotten back to practice probably that Monday, but it didn't matter. Shit, I showed y'all I can run this place. And, and and why I say that is, Taysom Hill. Do you remember Taysom Hill from the Saints? Taysom Hill was thought to be that he could be a starter because Peyton had put in place for him. And he had never actually even thrown a touchdown pass. And people were saying that Taysom Hill could have been the starter. Just the way the O coordinators schemed and got him in the play. I mean, that's what I'm like, wow, are you kidding me? And I think about that. This is where I think the barber jump in there because I, from my perspective, bro, um, in that era, very few offensive minds were, were using that level of creativity. I got you. In this era, as I watched it, yeah, almost none, right? Now I'm like, I see what they do with Tyreek Hill everywhere he's yes. everywhere he's everywhere he's been. I'm like, yo, what? Okay, so here's what I'm saying. Walt Harris didn't know shit about X's and O's, right? You told us that flat out. He was the disciplinarian. So no, in his mind, I thought that was Walton. No, oh, no, that was, was Walt Harris with the earring. Walt- Walt focused on the wrong things. Oh, yeah. wow. So, he, so here's he where Walt is. Coach. He was a good quarterback coach. So here's where Walt is with this. Walt's wow. like, okay, I know right. this dude over here isn't going to make a mistake. I'm just going to put him in. Even though he doesn't – even though he's not bringing the same skill set that, mm. that that Robbie has, he yeah. doesn't. 
need to have that skill set. He's going to run the right route. And by yeah. him running the right route, somebody's going to have to cover his ass. Wow. That means that the other guys are going to have opportunity somewhere else if they got to cover him. Yeah. And if Robbie wow. runs the wrong route, you might have one guy covering two dudes. You know, like you, you're just it's you can't it's, 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 it's just different. different. It's a tough thing. And Chops, I, I I said I came back to practice on Monday. Games on. I, I missed three weeks of – I basically missed training camp. After the first three days, the condition I had, I couldn't even run. I could, I could barely walk. I couldn't sleep. And I'll get into that. But when I left, he told the Tribune in the Post-Gazette that he was a part of our game plan. I don't know why he left. I would have played, to, to the Barber's point. I, I just didn't get enough reps and practices in – completely to show him that I was ready. I only practiced like three days that week, two or three days. I came back like Tuesday. So real quick, when you decide and you walk off the field, whatever it is you do, yep. do uh -huh. you turn your uniform in right then after the game? Do you speak to your folks and, yo, what do I do? Do you even get their two cents? Are you like, I've already made my mind up. I'm young, hardhead. I'm going to do what I want to do. How did that How that go down? I was already on it. Cause I, I I I didn't understand being hurt the way I was. I didn't understand. Um, this was my junior year. I was I was I played as a true freshman. Obviously, this is my true junior year, and um, I I couldn't see a path to getting on the field because I was behind AB. Right. Well, then the cough winner. Well, and then I didn't even know Larry came in in January after I left, and Larry Fitzgerald came in. I it's like. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, where am I? Um, so, so I was already on it leading, leading up to that day. The night before we had a walkthrough, uh, one of my teammates was making jokes about some, 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 something stupid. I was smiling. Walt Harris was talking, talking to team. He, he saw me smiling and he undressed me in front of the team. This is the, this is the Friday before that Saturday, that fateful day. He told me to leave, kick me out of the uh, South Side indoor practice facility where the Steelers, you know, in pit share. And he told me I couldn't travel with the team, which which means that I couldn't go to the movies with my teammates. I right. couldn't stay at the Double Tree and eat those delicious Double Tree cookies when we got back from the, the warm, yeah. buttery. I couldn't, you know what I mean? So I'm already feeling like an like oh he got it out for me. That's that was kind of the vibe that I was getting, and I and I was why he's always riding me. I don't even. I can't travel. This is embarrassing. I, I didn't even say nothing. I wasn't even laughing. All he saw was my teeth, and he 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 thought I was making fun of him because he had like a, a lisp or something. You know? so, so you 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 don't talk when Walt's talking. You don't smile. You got to look him in the eye, and you got to have your sideburns up above your earlobe, and you know no beard, no like straight. So he kicked me out, and so I was already on it. I, so I went into the stadium that next day, kind of pissed off, and then all the stars started to align right before my eyes with. AB going down, Yogi going down. I'm like, God, today's the day. And so literally when I got on the field, my parents are standing up there. I can see where they sit. They're sitting in the stands. And <laughs> this is the part I didn't tell you. When Yogi was ready to come back in, they kept telling me to get out the field so that Yogi could come in. And they didn't call timeout. There was like in between, in between plays, right. right? So they're like, Robbie, get up. Come on, Yogi's coming back in. I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not. I'm not coming off the field. They're like, "What? What the fuck you? What the fuck you doing, man? Get get your, get your, get off the field!" I'm like, "No, I'm not coming off the field." They call timeout now. Now the quarterback's yelling at me. The offense is look. I, they're all looking at me like, "What are you doing?" Um, I look up to the stands and I see my dad. My dad put his hands up. He said, "This is this is what I I'm I'm gonna mouth what my dad said. I want you to read my lips. Do what you got to do." Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. That was his blessing, Sheen. That was his blessing. And you was good, yeah. Shit. Say, and you know what? Say, say less. You know yeah. What? My dad said, do what you got to do. I'm good now, yeah. Y'all yelling at right. me. I'm just trying right. to shine. Like, I've been, I've been putting in work for three years Jeez. here. I, I'm hosting recruits. Everybody I hosted committed. I, I, I'm, I'm committed. I didn't, you know. I didn't understand. I didn't understand that I just I would have been probably out there, you know, had I stayed another week or two, I probably would have been out there. It, it made a name for us. I didn't know what I didn't know, guys. So I, I left. I went into the locker room, popped my pads, left everything there, got a ride. And then there was a team meeting the next day. I didn't go. And I asked them for my release. Mm -hmm. I never I never I never went back to the facility. Man, I think I 
I went, I drove from there to the south side, cleaned out all my stuff, and I knew I wasn't yeah. going. I, I thought no, I wasn't going. No exit with Walt Harris, no top. Oh. Because it because I was so emotional and emotionally fragile. I didn't know that that I was emotionally weak or not emotionally mature. Sure, um, yeah, I was a, bro. I was a, I, I was 18, 19 at this point. You're and a kid, um, man. I'm a kid, man. Shit. I, I didn't grow up till I was like 34. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still growing like, up. Like I'm still, I'm still working up. There's yeah. so much you got to learn. Real what talk. I see happening today, because I teach and I coached forever. I right. stopped coaching now because we do this. And I got my own kid who's yeah. going to be playing this year. Yeah. Look, there is no there is no timetable for you to grow up. When you're, when you're that young and you got everything coming at you like that yeah. and you got all these expectations for yourself, people got different expectations, but they tell you a different thing upon that. I mean, you're a kid and, yeah. and it's hard. I yeah. would never fall doing that way or doing anything. Good. And never. I had, I had elders, bro. I just didn't listen to them. Like my dad was like, are you sure? Uh, my mentor, I had another mentor named Mike Mangroni, even Chuck was like, are you sure this is what you want to do? And I would just, I don't know. Why don't you just talk? No, I don't want to talk to him. I don't care what he got to say. You know, type. I was on that type of time. So, um, so, so fast forward to Walt to Joe Walton. Walt Joe Walton helped me prepare for the realities of the NFL. Had it not been for him, I don't make that team in San Diego. Let me just tell you this: Joe Walton was not a good head coach in the NFL. No, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, it's, but, it's but he I did. Think. He did great things at Robert Morris. He got yeah. Robert Morris mm -hmm. on the map, Thanks. and then. You know, like, and then Banasak went there. We have a kid, a kid from my high school is playing there now. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, he's doing well, too. I just, I saw him last year. He came back to lift and stuff, and I talked to him. He's doing yeah. well there. And he, he had only played football for two years in high school. Oh. That's it. Wow. Like, we, we get a lot of dude. There's a dude who's playing for the Skins right now. He was drafted as a number one draft pick into the UFL uh, from my high school. He played at Frostburg for four years, and then that COVID year, he went to the University of Maryland. He was like the 18th-ranked tackle going into the draft, but they didn't get that deep into it. you know. So he ended up going UDFA. Um, he's with the Eagles. I'm sorry, he's with the Eagles. But he's a no, he was a number one pick in the UFL. Wow. You know? So, I, I mean, it's just – it's different today. I'm sure you see it with your son. I'm oh. sure you see it. You know, it's a different world out there. Literally. You know, they're treated like professionals today at the collegiate level. They the are. expectation is for them to act like professionals and they get paid, some of them, like professionals. Like, yeah. it's just a different world that, you, that you're dealing with today. You know? So, like, after all of that, you know, after you walked off, went over to Bobby Moe, uh, 2004 comes around. What, you know, were you expecting to get drafted? Or did you, did, did, you know, is that something you were expecting? I was on a few draft boards, man, and I I, uh, I was on the Eagles draft board, the the Colts draft board, the Titans draft board, and um, I shot the bed. I, I I so so there's a pro day. I wasn't invited to the combine coming out of Robert Morris. I was an alternate for the Senior Bowl coming out of Robert Morris. It, you know, somebody backed out that I would have got a chance to play in the Senior Bowl against the so-called you know who's who d1 yeah. or five and you know they i would have bust their ass and they would be like oh how this guy up <laughs> by robert morris you know um but but i had a pro day at duquesne indoor indoor um facility at duquesne around the around the court they had a little track so that's where i ran my 40. i came in i was training for the 40 in north carolina i was i stayed around 207 you know under 210 nice size as a safety, you know, I felt comfortable. I can, I can, I can play with that. I played my senior, my senior season at 205. So between 205 and 210 was about my sweet spot. Fellas, I came in to my pro day. I was only home for three days from North Carolina. I was in North Carolina for weeks training. I come on, <laughs> I swear to God, it's red lobster, cheddar, cheddar biscuits, man. And the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred twenty-one pounds on my pro day. Two, two, one. All those damn carbs and you know the uh, the the linguine, seafood linguine. I was eating with all the damn cheddar biscuits. Like I was at a buffet. I was. I had been. I've been so disciplined for so long. I just came home and went crazy. 
So I weighed in. And I was like, yo, this is wild. Let me go to the bathroom, try to, you know. Do something. Yeah, try to do something. <laughs> Golly, 10 pounds heavier. So I, I came in heavy, waterlogged, nervous as all get out. Man, I ran a four, six, five. Ooh. I had ran four, four, seven laser before was that, I left. Was that a 50 yard? Uh, right? <laughs> oh, shit. I was like, I was like, nah, we got to run that back. Ran it again. It's like, nah, <laughs> that's what you, that's what we got you down there. I'm like, yo, this is insane. Um, my my agent told me had I ran had I had I broke four or five I would have probably gone six or seven round but uh you know I did that to myself and um mm. what you what you don't realize is how important it is to get drafted because that tag kind of stays it kind of stays with you um, if you're a free agent man you got to put in work for three to four years before and then be on your unrestricted free agent contract before like Antonio Gates was like the, one of the first big time free that that was one of my teammates. That was a free agent that had a big payday, but it wasn't until he got well. They they knew he was a budding star. That's why they paid him. But you gotta you gotta put in so much more work when you're undrafted. You're way more disposable when you're undrafted. Like I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Nobody. So, no. When you get drafted, nobody wants to be wrong and cut. They, nobody wants to cut a draft right. pick. Now, right. who yeah. who did the scouting report on this guy who didn't cut right. the mustard? Right. Oh, right. that was. You mean Kendall Green? <laughs> Right. <laughs> Sorry, did I say that out loud? It just hey, Andrew Green. It's a safe space. Oh, man. Yes. So, so like you said, undrafted. So, did you work out for anyone else, or was it automatically the Chargers, or did you have the option of different? Or how did that? How did how did you get there? It's wild because the Eagles, the Cardinals, the Titans, um, they had loaded rooms at my position. So, my agent Joe Lenta, JL Sports. Uh, he's also a Western Pennsylvania guy. Mm-hmm. Um, he he had Joe Andrewsy, Cam Cameron Wembley, uh, the quarter Joe Flacco, Joe okay. Flacco. Was, yeah, yeah. So he he had you know he had some draft picks. David Akers, uh, Will Shields from the Chiefs. Wow. He was a lineman whisperer. That's how he him and Joe Butler had a relationship. So Joe recommended me to him. This mm-hmm. dude made me work out for him before he signed me as my agent. You know, agents are recruit. All the other agents are recruiting yeah. me. You know, I'm not going to say any names, but he was like, I need, I need, I need to see you work out before I sign you. And I, and I, I was humble enough to say, well, bet like, okay. So I ran, I ran four, four for, for Joe. Actually, Joe Butler was the one to do it. Cause he was in new England or new Hampshire, wherever Joe Lynn to live. Joe Butler actually timed me, Filmed it, sent everything to Joe Linta. He was like, "Oh, I can get him. I can get him drafted with that with those times." And I just got fat and slow. Uh, <laughs> it didn't get myself drafted, and that was that. How? So, so you knew? So you were home for the three days before you had your pro day. Oh yeah, grubbing. Let, uh, red rest. lobster who eats there. I know. It wasn't even Ma Duke's home cooking, just red yeah. lobster. I ain't going to lie to you. Them Cheddar Bay, they ain't got lots of people. <laughs> they ain't got lots of people in trouble. I ain't even going to yeah. front. Yeah. I ain't even going to Man, yeah. that's what? never. What? Those never Cheddar Biscuits, biscuit. man. Look here. Back in the day, if you'd have told me Mr. Red Lobster sold his soul to the devil yeah. to make them biscuits, I'd have believed you. <laughs> yeah, if was, if there, was crack, there was crack in those biscuits. I don't even know what crack is about, but I'm sure <laughs> it was in it. But I didn't answer your question, Chops, and I apologize. Um, uh, the question was, uh, why why San Diego or did other schools vet you? So my so those those three schools, they, they liked me, but they were loaded, and my agent was smart. The reason why I gave you the backstory about who my agent was, he graduated from Yale, super smart guy. Ah. He he was like nah nah they they want you and they might even give you a bonus but you need to go somewhere who did not draft a safety in mm-hmm. this class and they're thin at the thinner at the thinnest at the position to give your give you the highest probability of making yeah, absolutely San Diego did not recruit me they was I wasn't on their board they wanted another guy named Jason Lindsmeyer out of New Mexico State a, a, a lineman a tackle one of Joe's guys and Joe bundled me package dealed me. With Jason, he said, because Jason had other interests. He was on a lot more people's draft board than I was. They were also light at the position. Joe is talking to the Chargers, and they're like, we want him. He said, well, if you if you want Lindsmeyer, you got to take Butler. 
They said, sure, we'll take Butler. They hang up the phone. He tells me this when I go to camp, by the way. They hang up the phone. Two seconds later, they call back and they said, what position does Butler play? And, and what school does he go to? This is a true story. So he holds that close to his vest because he knows how, how I'm wired. He waits yeah. till I get to camp. And he tells me that you are a camp body and that they really wanted Jason. And this is how I got you here. So if you if you really want to make yourself known, you, you're already cut. You got to get yourself uncut. You so I'm, bro, I'm, I'm taking off helmets at camp. I'm 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 willing to knock myself out. Like you get a shot on Phil Rivers. Phil Rivers? Yeah. No, nah, you can't. I, I you can't hit you can't hit the quarterbacks. But I did hit somebody that almost got me sent home. Tomlinson. Ladanian. Tom. Bingo. This is the thing, guys. If you can't hit Ladanian, put him in a red jersey. Yeah. Don't yeah. Even, like put just just put the red jersey on it so we all know what type of time it is. But I took a shot, and uh, they were you like, shut up. They was like, bro, you you are trying to get yourself sent home. I was like, what you talking about? They was like, you don't hit him. It's a franchise. I'm like, well, why doesn't he have why doesn't he have a red shirt on? Yeah. Like, like, like Rivers and Breeze and, and, and Flutie. Like, why doesn't he have it? Let me ask you this real quick because we hear you're what you're East you're 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 Western PA. You're East Coast, but you go out to Cali to play. Mm -hmm. mm. What? Did the weather have any? Was it what, what was what was it like there? You know, what I mean, I'm down in Georgia now, so I know the difference. But See, what was it like in camp, bro? Murphy compared Canyon, to what you're used to, Murphy Canyon Road to to, and I've never been to California before this. I've never been past Michigan State before before <laughs> before this. I got five dollars in loose change in my in my in my pocket, to, like. <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean the 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 plane ticket was a blessing. Like the fact that I you guys are gonna fly me out. I didn't get a sign on bonus. Lindsmeyer, Jason got the sign on bonus. Rob Rob Butler, they didn't even know who the hell I was. So I didn't get the sign on bonus. Um, I got five dollars in loose change. I get off the plane and I and I see palm trees and sunshine, but I don't feel any humidity. I'm I'm blown away. I don't, I'm like, what? This is? Am I still in America? Um. And then I fall in love with Southern California. The vibes, the practice facility was situated in a canyon. Like there's mountains and real grass fields, manicured, greenest grass, the fastest grass that I've ever seen and played on, like a golf course type, you know, yeah. type greens. And I'm I'm blown away, man. I'm I'm almost in tears thinking about you brought me to that first day where I I'm I walked out of the facility, out of the locker room, and you walk onto the field, and you can see the canyon here, and you're just like, "This can't be. This cannot be like. This can't be real. I'm living a dream right now." If you've That's never been to San Diego, tell them, Rob. If you've never been to San Diego, you gotta go to you San Diego. Been. You're doing oh. yourself. You're doing yourself a disservice. You have to yeah. experience it. Rob, where do you live at out there? I lived in uh, Mission Valley. Okay, sure. I lived in Mission Valley. I was probably five five minutes from the from Murphy Canyon Road. In Mission Valley, I just wanted to be close. I wanted to wake up, jump in my car, and be at the facility in no time. So yeah. before you was a thought, I was living out there for about four months with my cousin working in between uh, my freshman and sophomore year of college. 84 Olympics, I actually went up to, to L.A. Wow. Oh, what a time. What a time. You got to do it. Yeah. yeah. We're taking the boy there next year. He wants to see California. <laughs> there you go. So, the boy. Yeah. The boy. Hey, um, we don't want to keep you too much longer, Rob. Man, I mean, we got a lot of questions to run through. I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. I'll, I'll rapid fire. Let's do a rapid fire. Rapid round. fire. You want to do rapid yeah. fire? Whoa. Okay. Yeah. You gave us that one. So, uh, out of the out of those four organizations you played for, what was your favorite? Chargers, Pats, Chiefs, uh, Ravens. Ravens. And did you play with Prime, by the way? Yeah, 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 yeah. Play with Prime. Did, I did. I did not take the deal with the Pats. Okay. I didn't. Take, I didn't take the. The Pats wanted to send me to NFL Europe, so I. I oh, said, wow. Joe. Joe. Joe was like, "Hey, you want to go to Europe? Because you can get some film." And you know, I, I had moved a corner from safety to corner towards the end of that my time in San Diego. I held out. The next week, I worked out for the Chiefs, and they signed me on the spot. So it was a good decision. Uh, I didn't really want to go to NFL Europe, so. To answer your question, hands down, and no disrespect to any any anybody that I don't say, of course, not. Of course. Uh, the Chargers organization and the locker room, the locker room first, then 
the I, the organization was what it was. It was really the locker room. If I'm really being honest, it was Drew Brees. It was it was it was Drew, and it was it was Ladanian. Um, the leadership that those guys led with and modeled for us. 25, 20. I was 23. They were probably 27. You know, um, most of the guys were married. Most most of the guys were le- under 27 and married. They're family guys. They were good, you know, um, you know Christian dudes. Um, even though Ladanian was a superstar and Drew was a budding superstar and, and Antonio and a ton of other guys, um, nobody was bigger than the team. It, it, it just felt like Nobody was bigger than the team. It was we over me. Contrast that to the Ravens, man. We, I, I probably played with more Hall of Famers and more wealthier, more well-known guys at the Ravens, and we had a losing season. Like we just couldn't get, we you know, we couldn't put it all, pull it all together. Which is why Dion was there to try to be that wisdom in the locker room. Okay, man. Look, and I know. Here's my thing. We hear it all the time, real quick on ESPN. He's a cancer in the locker room. He's dividing the locker room. But like you just said, these guys are married and you've been on, you know, in teams, they're married. They got children, whatever have you, and families. How much do locker rooms really get divided if a player and a coach are going at it or whatever have you? You know what I mean? Because, again, you guys have real situations at home that don't yeah. have a, a thing to do with what they got going on. And in football, it's next man up regardless anyway. Yeah. So how much truth is to that? We see this all the time on ESPN. Yeah, it's it's louder now. So if we had in-house beef, nobody, the media probably wouldn't even know that there was a rift between, we just, we weren't, we weren't that cavalier to, uh, or verbose as players to speak against the coaches publicly like that back then. You just. And, And even if you guys had beef, did it stop you from doing what you were supposed to do on Sundays or indoor and practice? That that's what I don't get because this is how you pay your, your bills and feed your family. So I will say this. I will answer it this way because this is true. To your point, it's like that's that's happening over there. It is it's it's disruptive because it's a distraction. But the real the real thing that messes up the locker room, the culture, is when a player undresses a coach or talks back to a coach and is not reprimanded or there is no consequence. That fractures the culture because. Now the rest of us onlookers who just watched this exchange is kind of like, I, I I don't know if I, how much respect I got for you after you let Buddy just rip you a new one in front of like what the heck is going on here, and and that that happened in college too with with, with, with Walt. You know what I mean? There was we had some fire. We had some fiery people. Yeah, you know, mm. whatever. That's interesting. That's mm-hmm. really interesting because they say that Coach Tomlin is one of the best coaches to play for yet. He has beef with dudes and they come at him. Like that's pretty interesting to me. It, it's it's unfortunate because you have a guy who really has his heart in the right place. And you're trying to be a mentor and a coach to 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 a lot of guys in a lot of cases, unfortunately for us, that that come from fatherless homes. And so you're experiencing that immature child as a grown man who's got millions. Oh, now you can't tell them nothing. Yeah, right. It's like a microcosm for what we're seeing in college with these nil with these nil kids. You know, they these guys are making hundreds of thousands of dollars, and some yep. several are making millions of dollars. Millions. Yeah. Millions. Hey, let me ask you this: You still a Steeler fan, or is that okay? Yeah. Oh no, no, no. I, you, I, 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 I had a trial for the Steelers in two thousand and nine um, for a futures contract, and I had messed up my toe. My toe was toast, and uh, Coach 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 T actually, um, what's the guy's name? Who was the GM? Uh, not Colbert. Colbert. I don't know who. Um, Colbert. 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 Yep, it was Colbert. So he there, he used to coach at right. He had a connection at Robert Morris. So somehow we got connected. Maybe it was his wife or something. Um, we got connected. He had he had me set up for a workout with Coach T. I had surgery in August of '08. Had the workout in January of '09, and it just. Had a kaleidectomy, turf toe. They went in there and tried to clean it up, and it, I was done after that. But so to answer your question, the barber, a hundred man, I I was this close to like I was like I, I to become a Steeler, like to 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 play for the hometown and the black. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's that like though? Like here you are wearing a San Diego jersey. Here you are wearing a Baltimore jersey. But yeah, your heart is in Pittsburgh. What's that like? What's that feel like? <laughs> man, you 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 I'll just. 
<laughs> you have to you you have to respect the team that that's paying the bills and keeping the lights yeah. on because you you know you honor who's signing your checks. But back then, you look at the Steelers and that de- you like if you play defense, and then when Ben start start having his when he start having his run, shit. If you played offense, you just like they were just clicking on all three phases, and they had that dog that was reminiscent of how my dad brought me up. Like it, it was it was it was. It just felt like an identity thing for me. Like oh, it without would, question, it makes yeah. more sense to be a Steeler than anything else. And, and the Ravens was probably a close second. You know that defense was yeah, nasty. That. That, that that Rex Ryan defense was nasty with Ray and, and Ed. Yeah, go ahead, hey, We're gonna spin, man. We're gonna go over to to your son Aaron, man. AB three, as you like to call him. Um, committed to Colorado. Oh, and- USC first. Oh, that is right. That is right. I forgot about that. USC first. Oh, man, I forgot about that. Home yep. team first. USC. Yeah. Then he jumped over to Colorado and then finally at uh, UT, Texas. How's he doing in his first camp? Hey, he, he starts tomorrow. So I, oh, it didn't I, even start yet. Nah. Wow. To, so I just was just talking to him about two hours ago. He's getting some oh, power steering fluid for his uh, scat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he don't got an NIL deal? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's all right. He's all right. By his own power steering field. Is he, is he, oh, he, yeah, yeah. No, he was asking me like, what to do and where do you, what do you, what do you? What do you yeah, yeah. No, he's, right. he's, so yeah. on here right now, we can say he's officially out of your pockets. Oh yeah, he's way out of my pockets. Oh, he's my way out of my pockets. <laughs> all right, that's beautiful good. thing. Okay. Uh, it's a was, beautiful, there a, was there a reason why he jumped from the buffs, or are you just that uh, he just better yeah. fit at Texas? Yeah, there's always a reason. There's always a reason. He he uh he he jumped from USC because they they wanted him as a corner. Right. And at the time he committed, he may have been open to playing corner, but he committed so young. He was right, like right. Lincoln's he might have been Lincoln Riley's first commit in 2024, first or second commit when he first got here. first. Yeah, I think it was his first. Yes. He had just got here like a week prior. Aaron committed at a at a, what, a recruiting right. event. Yeah. And um by the time Aaron's junior year was concluding, I had asked him because everybody was starting to talk about him being an athlete. I I know that game and I know how tough it is for you to be an athlete and get drafted high in the league. So I was like, plus the wear and tear on your body. I'm like, listen to me, man. I don't care what I don't care what none of them jokers are saying. I don't care what Travis Hunter's doing. You need to pick a position. So they wanted him to play DB. They liked him at DB. They thought he was one of the best DBs in the country. And he was. And and so he decommitted because he told them that he wanted to play receiver, and he kind of they were kind of like ah, but we want you to play DB. Boom, he commits to Colorado before their first season. So he commits to Colorado in this in the in May, going into their first season under under Coach Prime. I think once he saw how that season unfolded and kind of how the team imploded a little bit, mm-hmm. um. That didn't scare him so much as the social media and the he he felt like there was just too much too much distraction. Like he's more of a football. He's I, I just I don't need all of that. Right. I just want to play so football. I just want to play football kind yeah. of guy. Yeah. So um and, and he didn't know you know if Prime was going to go to the league after Shador left. He knew Shador was going. He might have one year with Shador, but then what happens after that? We don't know if Prime's going to the league. We don't know who the quarterback's going to be. What's the prospects of the quarterback being as good as, if not better than Shador, is pretty slim. So he decommitted from that situation. Um, and then, man, Texas came in. He always liked Texas. They came in like a dark horse. They needed speed. I is mean, that Sarkeesian? Steve Sarkeesian, yeah. So now he's so he so he's so he is on the offensive side of the ball. He's playing receivers. He de- he is. So he, he is. now now it'll be interesting if you can keep in touch. Like Manning isn't starting. But I'd like to know since your son, he's gonna have to, he's who is who's better, you know what I mean? So how does and the players know, regardless of who the coach, the players know. Yeah. So I'd like to know, you know, after a couple of practices, you know, he through camp, you know, Dad, <laughs> this is what's shaking out. This is better. With his size, real quick, what's his size compared to yours? When you now, of course, he got weights, better nutrition that we didn't know about back right. in the day. He's stronger, but he's way yeah, smaller. Because you weren't lifting that period. We didn't do we we never really lift. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, you, I mean, but but again, I'm my senior year at Perry. I'm I'm six foot one seventy five. Aaron is six one, just a hair under six one right now, probably one seventy two. And he's been there since he graduated early. And he's been there since January. He's okay. more of a narrow 
frame than me. He's yeah. I, I could be a strong safety. I could have been a running back, right? I, I could slim down and diet and play corner. So I I had I had this range. He ain't playing a running back or no strong safety. Like okay. his 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 butt's like this big, you know. Okay. I mean? like, so so with your experience, right? Yep. Going cornerback, talking as a corner. Yep. Who is his game more like? Would it be a Fitzgerald? Would it be a Moss? Will he run by? Does he? What? what who does he? Oh, as a receiver. Yeah. Who's his game more like? What um, would you? I would say if you were to look at a, a player comp in the league right now, um, you could look at uh, Diggs. Okay. Diggs is his comp. Diggs is his comp. You could look at um, Ayuk. Okay. Okay. Ayuk. Um, he's super twitchy. I'm looking for somebody who's got crazy yak because when after the catch, he's that's, that's when big, he's, time, big time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is he gonna get a rotation this year? I think that later in the season, um, this is the most stacked offensive receiver room in the country, in my opinion. If you look at our roster, you'll see Isaiah Bond, the transfer in from Bama, who's yeah. projected first round. You'll see Matthew Golden. You'll see Silas Bolden, who is the most experienced guy and really a sleeper in that group. These are all transfers, by the way. So you got a Bama transfer, a, a University of Houston transfer, an Oregon State transfer. Okay. Then you got a five star, a five star and a high four star. And um, John, John, John T. Cook, who's from Texas, who's now a sophomore. He caught eight ball. He's got the most catches uh, from everybody who's returning. That was there the prior year. So you got him as a sophomore. You have DeAndre Moore from St. John Bosco, who was a who was a high four star coming out who can boogie. You've got um, Ryan Wingo, five star out of St. Louis, who was recruited by every big boy. I mean, he he's like six two two ten right now. He looked like a pro right now, right now, and he can he run ten three. Jeez, and that's he's. <laughs> He's the one that told them, "Hey, you need speed. You need to go get my boy Aaron." So he he turned Texas on the air, and they played for Fast Houston in the seven on seven tournament. So they got a history together, and that's like you know one of his closest friends right now. So he's he's smaller in build. He's faster than me, top end. He's probably equally as quick twitch wise, but he got that dog. He plays offense like a defense. He's got he, he's going to punch a safety in the mouth who's two twenty five. He's going to punch. Got, he's got Chris Jackson coaching him up. Chris Jackson knows what it takes. Yeah, you know? see, that's see, gonna be good for him. That's a pro receiver coach for y'all who don't. Chris Jackson came from the Jaguars. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Hey, let's 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 jump down to your greatest accomplishment in life, Rob. Football, love, your wife, your kids. Yeah, what you're doing even... now? Uh, I mean, being a dad. I mean, I, I follow you, of course, on Facebook, and I see all the things you do. But yeah. Your greatest accomplishment in your mind, what's your greatest accomplishment? It's, it's hands down my wife. Okay. It's hands down. It's not even nothing that I have done, nothing that I will ever do will supersede or overshadow um the decision uh to ask my wife to marry me. Because because let's just start with her. Like I'm not who I am without without her in my life, you know, we, we grew up together. We got together 18 right. and 18 years old, got married at 20 and 21 respectively. I'm married with two kids at Robert Morris. I would bring my kids to practice wow. and the trainers would watch them when I, when I, when I couldn't afford daycare or my wife was at school. Um, yeah. Wow. yeah that like, I, I like, you know, it's a story. It's so many layers. Yeah, bro. I mean, she, I would, man, oof, wow. Yeah, I didn't that, know that, man. That's wow. two kids. So because she's just so dope as a human being she's 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 so high in integrity beauty inside and out just radiant um and then she gave me my kids our kids um allowed me to be a bonus dad to to the daughter that she had when i met her and that i raised as my own and that's my baby like she right, called right. me dad um that, when she gets married it would be me walking her down the aisle you know what i'm saying <laughs> um the, though the family that we create that, that that we created gave me a sense of purpose that nothing else could have given me. So I'm a wild boy at heart. Left to my own devices, I'm a wild boy. But because of her and the kids, I I, yeah. I move I move with a sense of purpose that I wouldn't move with if I was a single man. Um, it's the best thing that ever happened to me, y'all. Okay. Yeah, I think we, we 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 want to end there, or we want to hit him with the. The last question, Trump or Harris, and we ended there. I only want, I only want the answer, and that's it. I don't want to know why. I don't yeah. even know this. Trump or Harris? Harris. Go. 
Harris. All right. All right. Hey, let's close it out, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you. Man, yeah, that's good stuff, man. Appreciate that's good, you, good Rob, stuff. Man. Appreciate yeah. you. I talk told about him every I said, answer. I said story. we could talk to Rob all night because Rob, he yeah. will tell you the stories, man. I told him. Yeah. But, I mean, we got to get him out here to break back. bread. Yeah, we'll come back after the season. We'll see. We'll do a, a, a like a recap of how the season went for for AB and, and learnings. Maybe we'll get a chance to get him on here after yeah, the season. You in him, no question. Yeah, we would like that. We would like that. Appreciate yeah, it, right. Rob. We'll talk to That's you, it. baby. Appreciate it, guys. Good work. Yes, they will. There you have it, Rob Butler, Western PA's Rob Butler, baby. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> it just, you know what? I, I think we could talk to ten former NFL players that I don't think they would bring it to the to the show like he just did. He oh no! Just, I, was, just, I told, yeah, I, I, yeah, Rob. I, I already knew that how that was going to be. I he's just knew genuine. That. Oh yeah, he's just oh, genuine. Yeah. You could yes, feel it. Oh yeah, you could feel it from top to bottom. Yeah. You know, chops. Wrap it up. Tell us man, where we can find you. Man, shh, you know, on Instagram, <laughs> Big Chop 79, on Twitter, the real Big Chops, on Facebook by my government name, Michael Gregory Mills. Holla at your boy. Hey, hey, I, I'm now Rage Against the Rasheen on Instagram. That's where you can find me. Rage Against you. the Rasheen. That's I where that. I am. Uh, of course, Rasheen Hill on Facebook. I don't know what I am on TikTok. Somehow I'm on threads. I don't know how that works. <laughs> But that's an yes. automatic. Oh, okay. It just, it just works for Instagram. From, from X. Okay, well, X pushes that, you. Okay. That's where I'm X at. X gonna man. give it to you. X gonna give it to you. Barbara, where can they find you, baby? Hey, I'll tell you where they can find T Sizzle. <laughs> they can find him in the Dominican Republic <laughs> sipping some cocktails right now. I hope He's, he didn't get arrested. <laughs> Pirates just went up. Hold on. Hold on. Pirates just tied Houston 2 2. Okay. Teams did not look great tonight. Let me just say that. I'm but, gonna uh, turn it on. They they got T Sizzle. You can find him on Instagram and Twitter at one T Youngy, and you can find us, the Original Sports Podcast with Mark Meriday, our website podpage.com. Original Sports Podcast with Mark Meriday. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter, and you can also find us on Snapchat at OSP with MM. And you can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Original Sports Podcast. Shout out to our networks that we are part of, Manning Media, Let's Talk Sports Network, uh, Sideline Sportsnet, Elite Sports and Entertainment Network, where we are on Tuesday nights from 9 to 10. And also a shout out to Peak One Sports, uh, newest network we've, we've joined. So uh, you can email us with any comments, questions, suggestions for future guests. We'll even let you come on and talk your piece if you need to. Uh, that's it. Some Original people asking. Yeah. I got, I got some folks who want to want to come on here. Yeah, come on. Bring it. <laughs> uh, Original Sports Podcast at gmail.com. Shout out to Steve Medley for doing the voice intro. Charlie Hodgson for actually doing the intro and outro. And uh, don't forget to join us next week to experience the big O. The big O, Sports podcast.